Which cities in the world do you associate with great architecture? Probably a lot of European capitals, big cities in the United States, Dubai, Singapore, Tokyo, and others. But I never heard people going to Mexico City to enjoy architecture, and it was never discussed as a great destination for architecture lovers. But why? Let's try to figure out in this video what Mexico has to offer for architecture lovers and why people still don't come here for all the architecture Ciudad de Mexico has to offer. First, we need to decide about which architecture we're talking here. Pyramids or modern time? Usually, if we are talking about people who are interested in architecture and travel to see architecture, it's from mid 20th century to nowadays. Mexico, as many other countries, was influenced by modernist movement in Europe and by northern neighbors, United States. But you will not see here Le Corbusier, Walter Gropius, Miss van der Rohe, and Oscar Niemeyer in their pure form. However, actually, there is one building here in this city by Miss van der Rohe. Mexico has very rich history and traditions. Architects didn't hesitate to explore the Aztec and Mayan traditions, which obviously was reflected in the architecture. Important parts of distinguishing Mexican modernism is the use of murals, traditional bright colors, in strict forms of brutalism, constructivism, and functionalism. Also, sculptures play a big role in Mexican modernism. To show you all of the main architectural buildings in the city of 22 million people and the area of 573 square miles, I will need a month of filming and an hour of your time to watch it. So let me just run really quick through the city and introduce you to great Mexican architects and at the end we will try to sum it up and find the answer why Mexican architecture is so underrated. Let's start with Feliz Candela, who was a pioneer in thin shell structures. I already show you his first thin shell structure, Cosmic Race Laboratory in UNAM. You can see that in my UNAM architecture video, I link it below but he built something much more bigger and breathtaking. This is, or was, very famous restaurant Los Manantiles. Look at it! This thin concrete structure creates a dramatic open interior dining space. It's also located in Xochimilco, pretty touristy place for international tourists and local tourists as well who want to rent a trajinera and enjoy a couple of drinks going through pre-Hispanic water channels. This building was and could be again a great additional attraction here. But what we see here, it's criminally neglected, amazing piece of modern architectural history. Another great architect is Teodoro Gonzalez de Leon, Mexican godfather of brutalism. Interesting fact is that he had a scholarship with the French government and worked in France for 18 months with Le Corbusier. He was involved mainly in the famous Unit de Habitation project, which Le Corbusier did in Marcel. I'll just show you really quick Auditorio Nacional and my favorite Museo Tamayo Arte Contemporaneo. Look how cool is this building, how it works with the landscape, brutal forms, material, amazing. Pedro Ramirez Vasquez. He built National Museum of Anthropology, which is actually a must if you are visiting Mexico City because you're going to learn a lot about Mexican and pre-Hispanic culture. Another famous building is the most famous religious building, which is Basilica of Our Lady de Guadalupe. Ricardo Lagoretta. He worked a lot in the United States, but I'll show you some pretty cool buildings here in Mexico City. Behind me is Camino Real Hotel. Even from the street, you can really enjoy the forms and colors of the architecture. And the inner courtyard is also beautiful. If you are familiar with Mexican architecture, by now you're probably like, hey man, Luis Barragan, Luis Barragan. Where is Luis Barragan? You should have mentioned him first. He is the only Mexican architect who won the Pritzer Prize. And he was the second person who won the Pritzer Prize. It was in 1980. Before him, the first ever architect to receive the Pritzer Prize was Philip Johnson. Two other Barragan prominent buildings are located near Chapultepec, steps away from Condesa. This is an absolutely stunning Casa Gilardi behind me. I have to complain only about their rules, which are pretty ridiculous and this is the only reason I hesitated to visit it. So the entrance fee is 300 Mexican pesos per person and photography fee inside is 800 Mexican pesos per person. And all photographs are non-commercial use only and only cell phones allowed. Even point shoot camera is not allowed there. Another building is Casa Estudio of Luis Barragan, where he lived and worked. This is a UNESCO heritage site and museum. 
The museum can visit it also through guided tours, which are kept in a very small number of people, and you have to book them in advance. Entrance is 400 pesos if you're a tourist and 300 pesos if you're a Mexican. There is also one more building by Luis Barragan, and it's kind of outside of Mexico City, and it's a private property. It's called Guarda San Cristobal. There is a private tour to see the property and it costs 100 US dollars, which is a pretty crazy money for Mexico for one hour of visit. And I didn't do that tour yet, but I will definitely go there and I hope I will be able to film at least with my cell phone. If not, probably I will not even go there. So Luis Vargan definitely is the most iconic and influential Mexican architect. One of my favorite things in Mexico City is Torres de Satellita one of the country's first urban sculptures of great dimensions, which Baragán did in collaboration with painter Jesús Reyes Ferreira and sculptor Matías Guérez. There is so many good architecture in the city. I didn't even mention yet Agustín Hernández Navarro. Check out his studio. It seems to be abandoned at the moment, but the architect is still alive and in great health. He is 98 years old. I was really lucky when I came here because I noticed that the door is open so I knocked and walked inside and actually right now they're preparing exhibition of his works so next week this house will be open for his work which is such a great luck because I got a sneak peek inside of that building and I will be back here in one week to see the exhibition. Another very cool building done by uh, Augustin Hernandez Navarro is the military college but there is no way they're gonna let me in and film there, so I can show only some pictures here for you. Juan Gorman is another huge name in Mexican architecture. He built a lot of things, but the most famous one you can visit is his house and house of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo in San Angel. I talk about this house in my San Angel video, which I'll link down below. And of course, the UNAM library. This is the most famous Mexican mural, which is on the old sides of the library. I explained this morale in details in my UNAM architecture video link below. And at the time I didn't have drone, but now you can enjoy the morale from the better point of view. But this is still not enough for you. There is another great architect who is building organic architecture, Javier Senocian. His house, Casa Organica, is now a museum which you can visit. 300 pesos for Mexicans and for foreigners 480 pesos. You need to be in the house without shoes, photography is strictly personal, with the phones. Every time I see these annoying rules, I'm like, okay, next time. So it's still on my list to visit, but who knows when. This architect also designed Snake House, which used to be a very famous Airbnb. It's pretty expensive and it looks close right now. I also tried to find and book it for a night, but it's like booked for two years ahead, which seems that they just took it off the Airbnb. Also, there is a cool park around the residence and I came there once to visit the park and security told me that it's not for public, it's strictly for the residents. What a shame because this park looks very nice and another park or part of this park is still under construction and they plan to open it to public but it will happen approximately five years from now. If you like architecture, you will definitely like the modernist sculpture. My favorite is El Caballito, which is located in the city center and behind my back. Also, I really like Espacio Esculturio in Unam, which is closed due to COVID, and you kind of need to sneak out there to enjoy it if you want to. But hey, I love this Mexican COVID rules. Yeah, that's the reason why that sculpture is closed. Crazy, right? Mexico City hosted Olympics in 1968, and for Olympics, they created some sculptures, which were called Ruta de Amistad. Those sculptures represented the countries who took part in the Olympics. Those sculptures were neglected for a while, but recently they were renovated and located in the two locations. Honestly, I would love to see them in a better place than the, on the side of the busy highway far away from the city center. You cannot really get here easy. You cannot enjoy them by dangerously crossing the road, breathing car exhaust, getting nasty traffic noise, and no shade under the strong sun. Don't you think the historical sculptures done by many artists from around the world from iconic Olympic Games would deserve a better place? I do. I want to end this video in Cineteca. Amazing architecture, great public space. A lot of young people come here to hang out and to watch movies. Obviously, I haven't shown you all of the architecture city has to offer, not even half. 
not even a quarter. I still even haven't been to Museo Humex uh, in Polanco. Mexican architecture nowadays, it's not only the big famous names. It's a lot of small offices with talented architects who are designing unbelievable private housing, interiors and other buildings. For example, I really like the work of architect Miguel Angel Aragones. I got to know his work after I visited Viceroy Los Cabos in Baja California Sur. The only point I want to make in this video is that Mexico City deserves to be on the map of architecture cities to visit for architecture lovers and people who just appreciate it. First of all, there is stigma that Mexico City is dangerous. I mean, it's not much more dangerous than any large city in the United States nowadays, but still, people don't visit Mexico City, and if they do, they don't tend to stand here for a long time. I mean, it's hot here. There is crazy air pollution. Why would you spend so much time here if everybody knows Mexico for beautiful beaches, tacos, and beer? So crowded, dusty, noisy city cannot really compete with the beautiful Pacific shore. Another reason is that all this cool architecture is all around the city. And the city is humongous. You literally cannot cover all of that if you want to see this. You need to spend hours in traffic or just go by hot and not comfortable public transportation when someone can steal your phone or wallet. One more reason is I found that the architecture is not well maintained. I'm not sure who really want to see the building that is in poor condition. I mean, yeah, I want because I can appreciate the material, I can appreciate the form, the composition of the building, just ignoring the poor condition, but probably not a lot of people can look at the architecture like that. You know, I also think that Mexico City does not advertise itself. It, it's a big part of modern world. You have the big cities have their trends, have their famous places, things to do there, and in my opinion, I haven't seen anything that Mexico City done to make itself famous in the world for architecture. These are basically my reasons that I sought through and experienced myself while being in Mexico City, filming this video for you, exploring architecture, and just trying to really enjoy the city. If my video changed your mind about Mexico City and its architecture, please let me know in the comments below. If you've never been to Mexico City and you want to visit it, let me know as well, please. Or maybe you can point out another cool building that were not in this video and you really enjoy them here. Let me know as well. I hope my struggle of trying to film all of that and running around the city like chicken without a head was worth it. So please put the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Share this video between your friends because the algorithm of YouTube works the way that if you share it among, it will think that the video deserves to be seen by more people and it's gonna push the channel up. And as always, thank you for watching and into the next one.